Give it two. Give it three. Cover me up. I have a one question to ask. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Anybody ready to go walk with me? Yes, sir. Ah. War time. War time. You gonna make your name today? You understand? Yes, sir. One clock. Two clock. How you feel? How you feel? Welcome to this week's edition of our Born to Compete Youth Sports Show. Coming to you from Marietta, Georgia this weekend. Huge AAU tournament here. Yep. Huge AAU tournaments everywhere, I feel like now. I'm yeah. Jenna. This is Alex. What's going on, man? Alex just got back from Nashville, where, yeah. like we said, an AAU tournament was taking over the city. Yeah, it, I tell you what. If you don't know who we all can go with, you'll know as soon as you see these highlights. This is one of the top basketball programs from an AAU standpoint in okay. the country. Fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. The number one player in the country is on the eighth grade team, Marvin Bagley. A lot of people already know about this kid. It was fun to see, man. And then we're talking about Masterpiece team. Masterpiece from No Limit Soldier. I'm sure everybody knows about that back in the day. His team was there. Uh, Wisconsin Playground was there. The, that's the number one team in the nation. George United was there. They won nationals last year. So you had a lot of good teams there, a lot of great competition. And when y'all see these highlights, Jenna. I'm excited to see them. When you see these highlights, just prepare yourself because you're going to think you're watching a college team. You said they all can go, so yeah. let's see if they can. Check them out, man. The game everybody wants to see. We all can go All-Stars versus P. Miller Ballers in the sixth grade division. So this is ball is going Great defense. Defense going to win games. Play defense, offense going to come to it. All right? That's right. Great. Great. Box, everybody got a box out for the security. Here we out to the right. Make sure y'all play this blue right here. All right, you heard the coaches trying to give their kids a pep talk before it started. But we all can go, must have heard their coach, because they come out absolutely on fire. As they were behind the three-point line for most of the first half, steadily knocking them down as they knocked down six three-pointers to start the game off. Which would give them the lead going into halftime as the P. Miller balls would face a serious deficit trying to come back. But in the second half, that's when number three would take over. As you see him getting into the lane, fighting through, looking like D-Wade back in his time as number three scores on the layup. Then here on a missed layup, number 11 gets the steal, knocks down a layup, and you see P. Miller Baller steadily trying to get back into this game. And then number 12 to tie it up, going with the double clutch, would tie the game up, and this has turned into a ball game that everybody was expecting to see. But we all can go. One thing you better do is you better play them the whole game as number five hits him with a no-look pass, which is very pretty, gets inside to his man. But P. Miller Ballers, they understand. They're ready to play the whole game as number 11 knocks down a three-pointer and then look at number three with the big block inside as the P. Miller Balls are starting to play defense. And then here they force a turnover. Number 11 gets the ball, passes number six, and he will score on the layup. And the P. Miller Ballers would knock off We All Can Go in a great game. Nice comeback, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations to Shamar Morrow of the P. Miller Ballers for being named the B2C Player of the Week. We all can go versus Miami Top Risers in the fifth grade division. And here they open up the highlights. Look at the three-pointer by number five, getting the four-point play as he fouled on there. And then here, number five, forced to turn over with a steal from behind. See number 33 pushes up the court, and they find number one who converts the layup. Then here, a great play for We All Can Go. Number 14 gets the block, go behind his back, pass it to number 10. Number 10 pushes the fast break. Give it up to your runner. And We All Can Go will win the game. Well, our guys just came out tonight and played with some defensive intensity. Uh, that's, that's our motto is, you know, that's what we really, really pride ourselves on is being really, really good defensively and sharing the basketball and playing as a unit. So that's what our guys came out and did tonight. Texas Select versus We All Can Go, eighth grade division and Texas Select has come to play. They say they didn't drive 10 hours for nothing as they are ready to battle We All Can Go. And you see them getting the layup right there and then going inside, nice pass. As it gets the layup and Texas Select would have an early lead in this game as We All Can Go is facing a deficit. 
but everybody knows we all can go the eighth grade team starts slow but once they get going they get going and it's usually led by number 22 you see he gets in the lane knocks down the knocks down a little runner and then number one steps behind the three-point line who he will have a good game all game long and then here we go as they start the fast break with defense and just go ahead and watch and enjoy Marvin Bagley with the big time dunk. As you see, once they get going, they can get going as they feed off their defense. Right here, another steal, trying to get into the lane, fake one way, go the other way, but the center comes in. Marvin Bagley knocks down the layup. As we all can go, has gotten a lead in this game. And then to end it off, they go to the man himself. Can he get a dunk? No, not really. Just throw it off the backboard, but we all can go. Would win the game over Texas. Uh, every Atlanta. win we can build on, you know, uh, especially right at the beginning of the season. Just we keep on stacking and stacking and stacking and just trying to become the best team we can be and uh, go repeat the Nationals. Yeah. WACG! What? I have no life. My son plays basketball. We hear you, mama. Seventh grade division, Memphis War Eagles versus We All Can Go, and We All Can Go starts the highlights off with number six, knocking down the three pointer. And then here on a, turn, a careless turnover by Memphis War Eagles, number five gets the ball from We All Can Go, takes it coast to coast, and knocks down the layup. And that will pretty much be the story of the first half as We All Can Go with Dominate. And then the second half, again, you saw Mama with that shirt on. Said we do nothing but play basketball, and her boys are showing that they are as they get the steal here and knock down the layup by number 40. And then again, on an errant pass, inbounding the ball, Memphis Warriors will get the ball, force the turnover, and knock down the layup again. But we all can go. They're ready for the battle. As you see, number six gets the ball and knocks down the three-pointer as well. as We all can go would have the lead late in the game. But to tie the game up, they go inside to number 23, keep the ball high, make a spin move, go inside, and knocks down, knocks down the short jumper. The game ties, 7.3 seconds, 36 to 36. We all can go has the ball. And we all can go goes to number 20. He tries to go right, get it to the shooter. Shooter's cover. Get inside to the lane. Knocks down the shot, and we all could go and win the game 38 to 36. Yeah, I mean, we were going to get it in to Tiger, but he, they denied Tiger. He just went, made a move, went one on one, got to the paint, which they set in the zone the whole day. If they tried to guard this man, they couldn't have guarded this man the whole game anyway. Eighth grade All Star game with the girls in Columbus, Georgia. You see here, open up the highlights with a steal by number 22. Passes up to number 11. She takes the foul, still keeps her concentration, and knocks down the shot. And then, of course, everybody knows about Taylor Sutton from Eddie White Academy in Clayton County, Georgia. She gets the ball, starts the fast break, gives him a little bit of mood, clear a little bit of space out for herself, and knocks down a short jump. And then here, playing defense. Again, she is considered one of the best players in the country, if not the best point guard in the country, makes the steal. Goes through her legs, getting to the lane, gets the and one, and she is showing why she was picked in the All-Star game and is considered one of the best players. But at the end of the day, it was just too much Jessica Carter from the Lady Tigers. She is just a presence inside and knows how to use that long body of hers. And then here, see her down in the post, moving without the ball, clear some space for yourself, take your bounce, go ahead and get it up, and they will end up winning the game. You got the best of the best on both sides. They came together with limited practices two practices, they work together as a team, they were very hyped, uh, they work together as a team and very creative, they impressed me on the sideline, they were running stuff I didn't put in, but it worked out for us, uh, everyone did an excellent job, uh, we got people from out of town, people came down from Kentucky and played, uh, but again, this is great competition of the best of the best. Congratulations to Jessica Carter for being named the Post Player of the Week. All right, Alex, those highlights were impressive. Yeah. They all can go. He didn't lie to me. Yeah. All right, let's take a step away from the highlights for just okay. a moment. You mentioned a young lady by the name of Taylor Sutton to me a mm -hmm. few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this young lady and why you brought her to my attention. First off, see, people don't know, but Jenna was like this all-star basketball player. All right, Alex. So all right, Alex. When, when, Back when to Taylor. Whenever I hear something like this, I have to bring it to Jenna's attention because Taylor Sutton was unreal, man. Her handles, the way she commanded the game. She did everything you wanted to see out of a point guard and more. 
And so I had to bring it to her. Now you tell me what you thought, because you got a chance to see her. I did. I went to visit Taylor at one of her workout sessions. She works out with multiple trainers in the okay. Atlanta area. Okay. So I caught up with one of them. You were right about the handles. Yeah. Sick handles. Yeah. I mean, this young lady, she's in eighth grade. Yeah. I was impressed. And I think you will be too. That's why we made her our B2C prime performer. Check it out. I'm going to go out on a limb here and tell you that this young lady you see on the screen could very well be the future of women's basketball. I just have fun when I play it and it takes my mind off of all the stuff. Like if I'm having a problem and I come on a basketball court, I forget about it totally. With her game, uh, she's a great scorer, hard worker, looking to get better all the time. On this day, I caught up with 14-year-old Taylor Sutton on the court with one of her trainers, Sean Sherman. The first thing I worked on was just refining her ball handling skills. Um, she was a good perimeter player, but she needed to know the hows and whys, the reads and reacts of the game uh, from and from that position, from being a point guard. This past season, Sutton nearly averaged a triple-double for Eddie White Academy with over 20 points, 12 assists, and 8 rebounds. She also had 5 steals a game and shot 85% from the line as the Wolves won the 2014 Clayton County Middle School Championship. Taylor was honored as our Player of the Week following the title game, but she knows there's always room for improvement. My shot and my defense. I really like improve and like get better and add some new things to my game. Very athletic, very fast, uh, tremendous scorer. Can play off the ball, needs to be better playing with the ball, uh, but for now, hard worker, lovely personality. Uh, let's not forget that. Tells a very nice young lady, um, extremely friendly, great smile, um, and always looking to help other people. Taylor works out with multiple trainers in the Atlanta area and even travels to Arkansas to train. In early March, Sutton impressed everyone at the John Lucas camp in Texas, a warm-up for her AAU season where she'll join the Georgia Pistols Elite before getting ready to make the jump to the high school level. It's more aggressive and more quicker than middle school basketball, but I like that. The better she gets, uh, the better de she's going to be defended, uh, double teamed. Uh, again, she may not be a typical scorer on her team. Uh, the older she gets, her team will get better uh, and more size, so she won't be focused on just scoring all the time. She would have to learn how to distribute, um, how to read defenses, uh, how to create for other people, etc. Taylor also excels in track and enjoys art, not to mention she's a straight-A student. Sutton will be on everyone's list as one of the best players in the country as a freshman, and she already has her eye on a few colleges. I like Baylor, Tennessee, um, and North Carolina. For now, Taylor Sutton is our B2C Prime Performer. All right, Alex, even more impressed with Taylor I told after you seeing so. that story. I told Stop. you so. Stop. I told you so. I hate when he's right. Taylor is a beast, and she you is. finally got a chance to see she it. Is. So she you, is. So, uh, either way, either way. All back right, back to the show. On. Back to the moving show. Moving on. Yeah. Taylor is a beast. I enjoy spending time with her and her family. I appreciate them letting me come out. Yeah. One of our future B2C Prime performers I also caught up with is Abdul Davis. Okay. He plays for the ELW Future Stars. Yeah. We're going to show you his story in a couple shows to come. Uh, but he's playing in the tournament here today. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the thing about this is we're, we're, at, we're, we're covering the PQ Sports Tournament, AAU Tournament, and everybody knows they put on some great tournaments. And here they're starting the year. They have great competition. And you see Abdul's team in the background. They are in the championship game right now. And the great thing about Abdul, the great thing about this team, the great thing about this tournament is kids are coming to play at a high level. And that's why we're here today covering it. All right, so take a look at the highlights from today's action. Eighth grade division, YBO8 defending champions, ELW Future Stars playing Georgia Stars. Georgia Stars will find themselves in a 10 point deficit, but number two here is fighting to get his boys back in the game with a three pointer as they would get back within four, and that's when ELW would just take over as they get inside. And number 13 gives them a pump fake, has some of the prettiest moves inside, and knocks down a layup. Then here, number 12 goes up big, gets the tip to lay it in. And then you see here Georgia Stars with a big block by number seven, but they go back inside. Number 13, again, pretty moves down, down low with the pump fake and knocks down the layup. And then here to end off the highlights, one of the better shooters in the Southeast, number four, knocks down the three-pointer as ELW win the championship. Uh, it was just a great team effort. We had a lot of people hurt, but uh, we all pulled together. Everybody contributed, and we got the win again at the PQ. Boys, 
Congratulations to Taja Ray of the ELW Future Stars for being named the Perimeter Player of the Week. George Hill versus Georgia United, fourth grade division and number three, stepping out behind the three-point line, knocking down the shot. George Hill will be in the command of this game pretty much the whole game. We see number four here getting a turnover, knocking down a layup. And then watch this play by number one. As he goes coast to coast, getting through the defense, knocking down a layup, and George Hill will end up defeating Georgia United. Fifth grade, Mid Ohio Pumas versus Team Glory, and Team Glory will pretty much be in control of this game all game long. As you see, knocking down the runner, and then they go inside number 22, get the ball, turn, face the basket. Nice double clutch, adjusting to the, the attempted block shot as he would knock down a layup. And then here, no matter what age group you are in, this is just as good as play as any. You see him take the foul, stay inbounds, knock down a layup as Team Glory will win the game. ATR explosion and Kentucky Gators going at it. Look at the no-look pass by number 22. Nice way to start off the highlights as they're trying to come back as they were down early to ATR. And then here, watch this play by number 23. B2C top 10 plays. He goes with the double clutch with the 23 on his back, looking like MJ himself. And then here, ATR will get on the fast break as they will start to get up and down the court. As you see, they got the layup there. And then here with the outlet pass again, as number 23 leaks out, getting the layup. But Kentucky, again, would try to get back in this game, going down to big number 32, puts the defender on his back, knocks down the layup. But look at number one as he's trying to close out the game for ATR, as this is one of his many three-pointers, as ATR will have a convincing lead. But then again, Kentucky still trying to get back, going down to number 32, who had number one on his back at that time. Caught him in a bad position, gets the layup. But number one says, I'm going to get a little bit of payback right here. Step out on this three-point line with me. And bang, bang, knock down the shot. And ATR will win the game. Eighth grade division defending champions, Georgia United. Going against We All Can Go All-Stars. And Georgia United will try to make a game of this. But you see We All Can Go comes out as number 10. Steps behind the three-point line and knocks it down. But then Georgia United, knowing how to play We All Can Go, comes back. And number three gets into the lane, knocks down the, knocks down the jumper by the free throw line. And here, if you have a good point guard, it doesn't matter who's pressing you. As he breaks the press, gets to the number four. Number four goes up under the rim and knocks down the leg for the reverse. But you know when number 22 gets hot, things going, we all can go favor as they would take the lead going into halftime. But in the second half, it was all we all can go, but not without a fight from Georgia United. You see they get the steal here by number two, number 24, past number 24, and he knocks down the layup. But that's when we all can go, will go to their big man. As you see, considered the best player in the country, getting the ball down the post, showing the good hands and the athletic ability with knocking down the shot. And then here, the point guard, avoiding the turnover. Again, they go inside, and the big man again knocks down the, knocks down the layup. And then here, we all can go trying to break George United's press. They break the press, go back inside to their big man, who will end the game with a dunk, as we all can go would win the game easily over George United. Okay, Alex, so our show's been all basketball all the time. I don't let's have go. a problem with that. Let's go. This is a football man, though. So yeah. let's, let's switch now to our B2C Prime Overtime Series. Okay. This is where we do an all-season check-in with some of the elite athletes in our area. Yeah. I did a check-in with Gunnar Falk. Mm -hmm. He was our quarterback of the year at the gala. Yeah. Tell me why you love this kid. All right, listen. B before I even go real deep into Gunnar right now, okay. let me tell you, camps and everything like that, those are showcases. Nothing's wrong with that. You can spend $500, $600, $700 on a camp, but at the end of the day, this is what they're going to tell you. Can I pop in game footage? Who did you play? How did you do? And Gunnar is the real deal out there on the field. He took a hiring team that may have not been able to beat some of the better teams out there. He took them and led them. He did what he had to do. Accuracy, arm strength, arm talent, as I like to hear people call it. He has everything you want and even more. So this kid here, you're doing story on. I, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> you're quite the salesman here. <laughs> Our B2C Prime Overtime Series check-in right here with Gunnar Falk. You got to love football. Football is the greatest sport ever made. Between the contact and the speed and everything. I just love football. Gunnar Falk loves football so much. When he moved to Georgia from Alaska, it was the first day of school in August of 2012. And after class, 
He was on the practice field that very same afternoon. Now as his youth career comes to a close, Falk can see how he's gotten better at the game he loves. It's been good. It's going to be a good memory. I feel like when I was little, I wasn't that good. I was. They never gave me the ball or nothing, but as I got older and started working with my dad and then eventually met Tony Ballard and started working on my throwing and stuff, I think it helped me because my seventh grade and eighth grade year, I think I kind of shined out. He's been a phenomenal athlete, a phenomenal quarterback at the middle school level, but you, as you and I both know, at the next level, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, just getting as much information as possible in reference to teaching him exactly how to read coverages, understand coverage, coverages and movements, things of that nature. So as Gunner gears up for the next level, you can bet he will be a program changer. Falk knows everyone will be bigger, faster, and stronger on the high school stage, but he's as competitive as they come and told me there's something else that bothers him more than the opponent. I think it's going to be awesome. It'll be a good experience for me. But night games, I don't really like night games. It'd be cold. But other than that, it should be good. I look to have, be on a lot of coaches' lists going into the future. He's a mobile quarterback. Uh, he's a dual threat. Uh, he can hurt you with his feet. He can hurt you with his arm, things of that nature. But at the end of the day, I think he hurts you with his understanding of how to play the position. And I think that's a real big key for him right now. I think he can actually play right away. I mean, just because of the IQ of the game, and we're just going to get his body to match the IQ that he has. And so I'm, I'm extremely impressed with his, um, his will to get it done. You've heard the saying, Hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. Well, this talented 14-year-old won't have to worry about that because he's one of the hardest working athletes you'll ever come across, especially for his age. His trainer, Marlo Stewart, says Falk shoots for perfection. When he came and started working out with me, it was like unreal. I mean, he's like one of the, one of the best athletes I've seen, especially at his age. Um, we do got to work on some quickness and change the direction, but as far as his will to be the best, his arm strength, um, his knowledge, it was just, you know, it's uncharacteristic for a guy to be that age, to be able to you know, take in so much and, and, and give it all. One thing I like about Gunner, he's the type of kid that he believes in being a better quarterback today than what he was yesterday. He works hard. Uh, he's probably one of the most uh, dedicated young men that I've ever worked with at this age group. Um, I definitely put him in that top three. Uh, this kid wants it. He believes in it. He desires, but he also understands the academics comes first. Studies and sports. This eighth grader has learned to balance them both. Gunner is a standout on the football field we know, but Falk also excels in the classroom, on the hardwood, baseball diamond, and next year says he even might run track. But football is his main focus as he takes the next step in his career. I'm hoping it'll be good. It'll make me smarter and know that I'm not the greatest out there, that people are better than me. And I don't know, it'll be good. He has the knowledge and he has the to will to, to dominate his position. And he has a high focus on where he wants to be. Um, so this kid will come to any program and he's going to take it to the next level. Uh, he's like one of those guys that you kind of dream about. Uh, and for him to be an eighth grader going to, to be a freshman is just amazing. I heard, you know, through the grapevine about this kid and he can't walk to my door. And I said, well, can't be that good. And he is that good. Not much more I can say after that. Our B2C Prime overtime check-in with Gunner Falk is complete. Give me two. Give me three. Turn me up. Top 10 plays of the week at number 10, ELW Georgia Stars. Number 7 from Georgia Stars says, give me that. Knocks it out to the three-point line, but they go back in to number 13. He would end up having 29 points in this game. In the championship game, as he would end up leading ELW to the championship in the PQ Sports Tournament. At number 9, number 14, we all can go fifth grade team. Gets the block, starts the fast break with a behind-the-back pass at number 10, and then number 10 will find the open man who would knock down the layup. Great play, great moves in transition. Fifth grade, we all can go with end up winning the game. At number eight, look at the steal by number two. We all can go with the highlighter shoes on. He said he's going to make the highlights as he gets the steal, go coast to coast, and knocks down the layup. At number seven, number 24 from Wisconsin Playground. Oh, my goodness, with a nice move. Give him the fake. Knocks down the layup as he is one of the better players in the country. At number six, 
You see the steal here by Team Glory. Doesn't matter which age group you are. This is a very difficult play to pull off. Taking the foul, staying inbounds, knocking the layup down with his left hand. At number five. You see here number 22 for the Kentucky Gators. Hits him with a no-look pass inside as that would be one of the few bright spots for the Kentucky Gators as they would end up losing the games. ATR would end up winning it. At number four, again here, the Kentucky Gators, same game, making the move with the spin move hanging in the air like MJ himself, avoiding the block, putting it off the glass. Again, as the Kentucky Gators would end up losing this game, but again, nice play by the number 23 Kentucky Gators. At number three. Look at the move by we all can go reach up under the basket, come back out, lay it up with your right hand. As we all can go, we'll end up winning that game against the Texas Select. At number two, when they get going, they get going, and you know they're gonna they know they're gonna do an alley oop on you eventually. As Marvin Bagley goes up in the air, and this is just as pretty as it can be. As he gets the crowd to his feet, and we all can go, we'll end up winning the game. At number one, 7.3 seconds left in the game. Score tied, 36-36. We all can go, number 20, goes to his right, almost loses the ball, gets back in the lane, throws up the ball with a runner, and he would end up winning the game for we all can go, as they would end up winning the game, 38-36. to And that is your top 10 plays of the week. All right, guys, that was Gunnar Falk. And as I told you, man, he is the absolute real deal. The way the, the work that kid puts in is unreal. And, and here's the thing, man. At the end of the day, we cover youth sports. That's what we do. We love to highlight the kids, showcase the kids, all that kind of stuff. But what makes me even happier is to see these kids, man, and Gunner's included in that conversation, but to see these kids walk into something they're supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing that makes me happiest about it. And, and to see them fulfill uh, – the potential that they have. And, and so seeing Gunner do that, man, I'm just happy to see it. There's no denying somebody who's going to work that hard. When I was there at his training session, I yeah. was thinking about the Nike shirt that says, your workout is my warm up. Okay. That's exactly what that okay. kid does. I was sweating just watching him. <laughs> I was, it was amazing. It was fun though. It was yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. Anything before we go? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, next weekend, Georgia United, we all can go. Some of the top teams in the country will be here in Atlanta, Georgia, for one of the top AAU basketball tournaments around, presented by Georgia United. And so I can't wait to see that, man. If you're not Ooh. excited for that, that's going to be a good one coming to the city. All right, AAU's in full swing. Yeah. They didn't give them a breather after middle school. No, let's go to work. Let's All get right, to work. AAU's already. Yeah. We're in full swing. You uh -huh. were in Nashville. We yeah. were down in Columbus, uh -huh. here in Marietta. I'm going to take a breather just for a minute. We're going to wrap this one up. Cause we're gonna get going again next week. Let's go, man. You got you it. You don't even want to stop. I, you don't even want to stop. But we're gonna have to stop this week's okay. show. That's it. We appreciate you guys joining us. For Alex, I'm Jenna. You guys have a great week. Take care, y'all.